Welcome in the name of Christ as we gather for worship on this, the Festival of the Reign of Christ. I'm Anne Svenningsen and I serve as Bishop of the Minneapolis Area Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. We are so grateful for the ways during COVID times that our congregations and ministries have creatively gathered for worship both online and in person. Today, our hope is to provide a worship service that both celebrates and strengthens our synod faith community, as well as provides a small respite for congregational worship leaders. It's part of our synod's Tending Weary Souls initiative. We are so grateful to Augsburg University, our partner in ministry, for providing the worship space for this service. And we're thrilled to welcome our worship leaders, Andrea Sorum and her talented Augsburg musicians, our assisting minister, Pastor Babette Chapman, Augsburg University pastor, and our lector, Toby Reinsma. It's also today an honor and a privilege to welcome Archbishop Musa Philobus of the Lutheran Church of Christ in Nigeria, the wonderful Companion Synod of the Minneapolis Area Synod. We are thrilled also to partner together with the Lutheran Church of Nigeria to launch the first ever Lutheran University in Nigeria, which you'll hear more about a little bit later in the service. Archbishop Philobus also serves as the president of the Lutheran World Federation, a global communion of 148 Lutheran churches across the world. Now it's my privilege to welcome Augsburg University President Paul Primenau to bring a greeting. Following his words to us, we will continue our worship together for we know that God has promised to meet us there. Greetings, I'm Paul Pribonow, the president of Augsburg University, and on behalf of our students, faculty, and staff, I am bringing you greetings here in this special occasion as we are bringing you this worship service from this beautiful Hoverston Chapel on the Augsburg University campus, a place where each day during the academic year we gather for chapel services, a place where we come together to worship, to pray, to celebrate, to mourn together as you do in your congregations and in your sacred spaces. I'm especially pleased that we're here today um, with our colleagues from across the Synod bringing you this special worship service because in many ways this is a reminder of the ways in which the colleges and universities of the ELCA are connected to the synods and congregations uh, across uh, the country. And I am especially proud of the ways in which Augsburg has begun to think about how we reimagine the relationship between our universities and colleges and congregations, in particular through our Riverside Innovation Hub and through our Christensen Center for Vocation. We are learning important lessons about what it means to live as faithful people in the world every day here on campus, in our neighborhood, and around the world. And we know those are the same issues and challenges that you are facing as you think about your individual vocations and your work as congregations in the neighborhoods that you serve. And so we look forward to the many ways that we will mutually, mutually benefit and, and support each other in the work ahead. So again, greetings from the Augsburg University community. It's a joy to worship with you.
The grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Loving God, come to us now in our gathering across the Minneapolis area synod, across geography and through technology, and ultimately united by your Holy Spirit. Still our distracted minds, our tired hearts, our longing bodies. Then speak the power of Jesus' name in such a way that we might hear it, and in such a way that we might bear it into the world. For we move and pray by the gift of your breath within us. Amen. reading from Revelation. Grace and peace to you from the one who is, who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before the throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and sovereign of the rulers of the earth. To Christ, who loves us and who has freed us from our sins by the shedding of blood, and who has made us to be a kingdom of priests to serve our God and creator. To Jesus be the glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, Christ is coming on the clouds for every eye to see, even those who pierced Jesus, and all the peoples of the earth will mourn over Christ. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says our God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The grace and peace of Christ be with you all. Amen. Please turn with me to the Gospel according to John chapter 18, and I'll read verses 33 to 38a. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. It was your people and your chief priests who handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you are right in saying I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? What is truth? Dear friends in the Minneapolis area synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and the Lutheran Church of Christ in Nigeria, it is a great honor to bring the word of God to you on this morning of Christ the King Sunday. As a former student of Luther Seminary, I always recall with gratitude the friendship and support Ruth and I received from several congregations of the Minneapolis area synod, Luther Seminary community, and the churchwide office 
of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Several pastors and leaders of the Lutheran Church of Christ in Nigeria who studied in the USA also often joyfully recall your support. On behalf of the leadership and members of the Lutheran Church of Christ in Nigeria, I thank you all. Thank you, Bishop Ann Svenningson. Thank you, the leadership and all pastors and congregations of Minneapolis area Synod. Thank you for your kindness and generosity. The Lutheran Church of Christ in Nigeria and its entire leadership cannot thank you enough, particularly for launching a Synod-wide campaign and setting aside today Sunday, November 21, as a day to offer prayers, a day to offer thanks, and a day to raise awareness and solicit for support for the audacious goal of establishing Lutheran University, Nigeria. Together with 2.2 million members of the Lutheran Church of Christ in Nigeria and fellow Christians and brothers here in Northeastern Nigeria, we are greatly we are greatly excited about the possibility to set up a Lutheran University, and we are so grateful that the Minneapolis Area Synod has offered to accompany us in achieving this goal. Thank you, and may Christ, our eternal King, bless you richly. Amen. I would like to reflect a little bit on Pilate's question to Jesus, verse 8a, where he said, he asked Jesus, what is truth? Now, every reader of the Bible would understand that the religious authorities of Jesus' time never welcomed him. They rejected him. They rejected him mainly because of what he says and does, because they believed he did not have the qualifications of a religious elite. Everything that Jesus says and does contradicts the culture of his time. For example, he was eating with sinners. He was touching unclean and outcast people. He was speaking to women something that was just unthinkable for any religious leader at the time. And the Gospel of John opens by proclaiming Jesus as the word that was in the beginning with God, the word that was God, and the word that became flesh to give life to all people. Jesus himself says to his disciples that he is the light of the world. He is the good shepherd. He is the living water. He is the bread of eternal life. And he is the truth. So when Pilate asked him whether he was king, Jesus replied, I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Now, everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Truth? What is truth? Pilate asked. You see, the religious leaders executed Jesus not for who he really is and was. Not because he came to bring peace and justice and offer eternal life. No. They rejected and even executed him because they thought, because of what they thought he was. They executed him because they saw him as a threat, a threat to their way of life. Again, because everything that he, da he did was in contradiction to their way of culture. So, even to us today, it matters who we say Jesus is and who he is in our lives. Often nowadays we hear news media reporting about political leaders around the world threatening not anymore to allow refugees and those fleeing from violence and threat to their dear life. They don't want to allow them entry into their countries. And we hear also of political leaders and traditional leaders taking up power by force. This is not the kind of kingdom Jesus is talking about. Not a kingdom that only allows people who think like him or look like him. 
Jesus' ideal of a king is radically different from those that dominate and exploit power. Instead, domina instead of domination and exploitation, Jesus as king puts the people above profit and love for the law. Jesus never formed an army or built a territory, yet they called him king. Why? To mock him and to get him into trouble. To get into him into trouble because the title king itself is a threat for the Romans who had no tolerance for any king but Caesar. But Jesus, in fact, has a kingdom, a kingdom that is different. And his kingship is marked by love, by care, and by hospitality. For example, when there was not enough food for the crowd that was gathered, he turned five loaves and two fish into abundance, food abundance. He is king. He is king that weeps alongside the people who were weeping out of love for their friend. A king that speaks to a lonely woman by the well who was scorned by her community and yet acknowledging her human dignity and offering her the living water of eternal life. This is the truth that Christ came to testify. It is the truth that Jesus teaches us in the in, in, sorry. The truth that Jesus teaches us is the truth of a life to live by. It is not a truth that is just a matter of intellect or what we think. This truth compels us to be faithful and living witnesses. Christ the King Sunday, dear friends, invites us to take a deeper look into what Christ as King means to us his crucifixion, his death, and his resurrection teach us his kingship is indeed not of this world. Worldly kings often take power by force and lord it over the people. Jesus neither fights nor teaches his followers to fight on his behalf. He never teaches his followers to use violence to preserve his reign. In Jesus' reign, violence is never an answer to violence. This is quite a challenge to those who think that violence is the only answer to violence. Now, violence has its limitation. It has its limitation in that its result is not always life, which Jesus came to offer, but death. As I was preparing for this reflection, I was reminded of the words of Martin Luther King Jr. that says, and I quote, the ultimate weakness of violence is that it is a descending spiral begetting the very thing it seeks to destroy. Instead of diminishing evil, it multiplies it. Through violence, you may murder the liar, but you cannot murder the lie, nor establish the truth. Through violence, you murder the hater, but you do not murder hate. It continues. In fact, violence merely increases hate. Returning violence for violence multiplies violence, adding deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that, says Martin Luther King Jr. This is the truth that Jesus came to testify to. The truth that he lived and died for. And the truth he calls us to live for as well. This truth challenges us to let go of our perception of truth as a matter of intellect and to face the reality of who we are as sinful human beings before God. We are not perfect. And we cannot attain life just by ourselves. It is the gift of grace. It is eternal truth that originates in God and not in us. It is found in God. God who is love and who is grace. Dear friends, 
who we say Jesus is to us has implications for how we live our lives in the world. Jesus tells Pilate, and I repeat this again, everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. In a world where there are so many voices beckoning us and urging for our allegiance, those who listen to the voice of Jesus are led into truth and eternal life. Those who listen to his voice are radically transformed in the way they relate to their neighbors and those who are different transforms them from enmity and hate to love and care. Those who receive the truth Jesus testifies about means that they are able to face the truth about their vulnerabilities, the truth of who they proclaim Jesus to be and what that, is, that means according to their daily lives. Next Sunday, November 28, we begin the season of Advent when we anticipate the birth of a baby boy whose birth is itself so different. That boy came to witness to the truth that God is love. For this I was born. For this I came into the world to testify to the truth. And friends, do we also like Pilate ask what is truth? He will tell us, this boy will tell us that truth is peace, truth is joy, truth is hope, truth is forgiveness, truth is embracing, truth, truth is something that pulls us towards one another rather than away from one another. Truth that cares, even for the dejected. Truth is what John chapter 1 say, calls saying, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. He was in the beginning, and all things came into being through him. And without him, nothing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. This light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Dear friends, let this truth dwell in us, and compel us to live as witnesses of Christ in the world to the glory of his name. Amen.
we, the congregations and worshiping communities of the Minneapolis Area Synod, are members of the Lutheran World Federation. We share in the core convictions of our Lutheran identity. Therefore, we believe we are called to proclaim the good news of Christ's life, his death on the cross, and his resurrection. And through Christ, we are saved by grace. We live our life together in communion with the church centered in our worship of the triune God, experienced in word and sacrament. We are freed by Christ to love and serve our neighbor and care for the whole of Christ's creation. We confess in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church and are resolved to promote Christ throughout the world and further our united witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all creation. God is here. Even though the earth changes, the waters rage, the empires falter, God is here. Through Christ Jesus and by the power of the Spirit, God's reign of divine love is bringing hope and peace for all. Oh God, in Christ you reveal the inbreaking of your heavenly will be done on this earth. And we need your reign to come for trespasses are committed, divisions form, and animosities fester. We encounter the reality of our broken and hurting world in the climate crisis. Though evils of racism and by way of inequitable distribution of wealth and resources, by the movement of your reconciling spirit, bless your people with the courage to reach past old wounds and persistent fears, heal our hearts and center us in the call to care for your creation. Move your church, stir elected officials, strengthen our resolve and empower us to work out our baptismal callings, to share your creative and redeeming word with this world you so dearly love. We lift our prayers to you. Oh God, in the promise of Christ Jesus, you are ever present with us. We celebrate our shared work with the Lutheran World Federation and the Lutheran Church of Christ in Nigeria. Continue to uphold Archbishop Musa Philibus as he endeavors to guide your church, including the creation of the Lutheran University Nigeria. We pray for leaders of congregations and communities here and throughout the world, including bishops, 
deacons, pastors, youth leaders, cantors, church musicians, and all who nurture and equip the body of Christ. Sustain your people in these pandemic days and tend to the weary souls among us. Bolster the spirits of healthcare workers, social workers, teachers, school administrators, and school boards, and all seeking to keep our community safe and well. Equip us all for the challenges we face as people continue to suffer from dis-ease in the heartache of loss, we boldly pray for the restoration of your people in need of physical, mental, and emotional healing. Grant us your salvation this day, and in your coming reign, we lift our prayers to you. To your hands, gracious God, we entrust all for whom we pray, spoken here and held close in our quiet hearts. Receive these prayers as you receive us in the fullness of your divine mercy. Amen. Jesus, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our creator in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we pause for the offering, I invite you to give generously to your local congregation. At the same time, I encourage you to participate in a thank offering as we work together with our companion synod, the Lutheran Church of Christ in Nigeria, to launch the first ever Lutheran University in Nigeria. You may not know this, but only 40% of students who are eligible for university education can find a placement in the country of Nigeria. And not only that, those limited openings aren't always shared equitably. They can be awarding, awarded according to the region where you live or the religion that you hold. The Lutheran University is needed now to provide quality higher education and a welcome for all students. I hope you will join our Synod's congregations as we seek to raise a gift to support this endeavor. We are Nigeria's only companion Synod. And in the nine years that I've served as Bishop, this is the first time we've launched a campaign to support that companion synod. Yes, $500,000 is an audacious goal for us to try to meet by the end of 2021. But I believe the Holy Spirit is calling us to this work and we have the capacity to respond to that call. Please look at the website on the screen where you'll find lots more information as well as many different ways to give by check, using a URL, uh, making a pledge. We really hope to have every one of our 145 congregations in the Minneapolis Area Synod participate in this goal. And now receive the benediction. 
May the Alpha and the Omega, the Mighty One who reigns in love, fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you might be overflowing with hope through the steadfast love of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, serve God's world in love. Thanks be to God. <laughs>